I'm Christina Garza, the Campus Outreach Director for Survivors of the Abortion Holocaust. Our nation is facing an unprecedented attack on faith and freedom. We all have a part to play and a duty in this day of crisis. We are asking for your help today. Beginning at 5 p.m. on September 29, 2012, we will engage in 72 hours of continuous prayer, prophetic witness, and arrests in front of the White House. We will prayerfully and peacefully assemble as a twofold public witness. First, we'll be a prophetic witness to the church declaring, if they outlaw your faith, the faith will become outlaws. Stand against the health and human services mandate now, or soon jail may be the only option. Second, we are sending those in elected office a warning. We will not comply. You hold office because we chose you, and we will not comply with the evil health and human services mandate or surrender our God-given freedom. This is why we need your help. We are working to bring a contingent of young people to the White House. The response from students has been overwhelming. They are willing to travel, to spend their time, to risk their freedom. Only one thing holds them back. Most students cannot afford to take a trip to Washington, D.C. We want to offer students partial and full scholarships. Will you go to acts529.com today and donate? Donate to bring that army of young people to the White House on September 29th. Acts 529. We must obey God rather than men. If you believe that our nation is in crisis, give today to send students from all over the country to the White House for Acts 529. Because I will not comply. I will not comply. I will not comply. I will not comply. Hi, I'm Jason Hershey from the newly pioneered Washington, D.C. House of Prayer, and I'm standing here on the ellipse of the White House, just across the fence from our president's backyard, and I'm here to share great news with you. It's unprecedented that anything like this has ever happened before, but we've obtained a permit from the National Park Service to put up a tent on this land for over 40 days this fall to literally do Tent of David day and night worship continuously from September 25th until November 6th, Election Day. We are thrilled about this because obviously we know in Psalms chapter 22, verse 3, the proper rendering of that scripture says that the Lord is enthroned on the praises of His people. I love that because before man ever steps into the polling booth this November the 6th, before we ever go in and vote the lever for man, we want to come to this place, on this, this ground right here, that's actually, it's under the surveillance of the Secret Service. This is, it's, it's part of the White House grounds to come on this land to get the presence by the palace in the capital city, just like King David did. And before we ever step into the polls, that we'd say, Jesus, you are the King of Kings, you are the Lord of Lords, believing that when His throne comes on the praises of His people, that Jesus came not to condemn the world, but to save it. That Jesus is good news for America, and that He's coming to save this great nation. And so with great hope in our hearts and great joy in our spirits, we are blowing the trumpet to summon worshipers this fall from all 50 states. I believe that's a dream of the Lord that we would have a worship team from all 50 states be represented at some point underneath this tent here. So I know 40 days is a long time and many of you have jobs and can't come here for the whole time. But maybe you can come with your worship team for a weekend or a couple days or for a full week and stand here, represent your state, represent your church, your movements, your house of prayer, wherever you're from, that we really could come together as the United States of America and do nothing but enthrone Jesus.
No one will be able to be armed. We yes, will sir. take all yes, weapons. Sir. Every service member has an obligation, not just, not just that, they, that they can refuse a uh, legal order or an unlawful order, they have an obligation to, they have to. And so they have to make a decision for themselves where that line is. Anyone can understand why these people, after six days, are still in this filthy, filthy, miserable convention center. Why are they still here? There's the freeway here. I tell you what I would have done, I would, what I would still do, I would say, let them walk out of here. Let them walk away from the filth. Let them walk away from the devastation. Let them walk away from the dead bodies in here. Them walk out of there because I'm standing right above that convention center. And what they've done is they've locked them in there. The government said, you, you go here and, and you'll get help. Or you go in that Superdome and you'll get help. And they didn't get help. They got locked in there and they watched people being killed around them. And they watched people starving and they watched elderly people not get any medicine. And now they know it's happening because we've been telling them repeatedly over and over every day. And you know what they're doing now? And I'm not blaming anyone. I'm telling you what's happening. They have set up a checkpoint at the bottom of this bridge. That, this is the bridge that takes you from New Orleans over into Gretna, from Orleans Parish into Jefferson's Parish. It's the only way out. It's the, it's the connection to the rest of the world. And they've set up a checkpoint, and anyone who walks out of that city now is turned around. You are not allowed to go to Gretna, Louisiana from New Orleans, Louisiana. Over there, there's hope. Over there, there's electricity. Over there, there's food and water. But you cannot go from there right, to Chef, there. I think the government will not allow you to do it. It's a fact. I don't, I don't know, man. I don't. Let them walk out of here. Let them walk the hell out of here. Let them get on that interstate and walk out. Walk. We had Walmart deliver three trucks of water, trailer trucks of water. FEMA turned them back. They said we didn't need them. This was a week ago. Uh, FEMA. Uh, we had a hundred. We had a thousand gallons of diesel fuel on a Coast Guard vessel docked in my parish. The Coast Guard said, "Come get the fuel right away." When we got there with our trucks. They got a word. FEMA says, don't give you the fuel. Yesterday, yesterday, FEMA comes in and cuts all of our emergency communication lines. They cut them without notice. Our sheriff, Harry Lee, goes back in. He reconnects the line. He posts armed guards on our line and says, no one's getting... If we issue our declaration of 10 orders that we will not obey, and what those are designed to do is to get the troops thinking ahead of time, about where the line of the sand is in advance. And that's what we're hearing in feedback from people in National Guard units is that, that in Katrina, that's kind of what happened, is the police and the military there, the National Guardsmen, were, were caught off guard and really hadn't thought about it in advance. Walking up and down these streets, you don't, you don't want to think about the stuff that you're going to have to do. Somebody pops around the corner. Let me shoot an American. And what we're hearing is, is that it won't be the same way next time. There'll be more who will say, no, I'm not going to do that.
pass the torch to the next generation. Everything that we've fought for will pass away. If we don't have people who believe the principles of freedom, we won't be a free nation. The only way you can be a free nation is if you have a citizenry that's educated well enough to understand what it takes to preserve freedom. It is so important that the next generation of young people be ready and prepared to fight for freedom. Good future leadership happens intentionally. And that's what Gen J is all about, to make sure that people understand the principles of freedom and will be willing to lead the country toward freedom in the years ahead. This idea of freedom is the most important thing that we have, and it's worth fighting for. I don't want to be someone who grows old watching the sunset of America and telling my son stories about it, what it used to be. Our country's future is at stake. If Christians cease to be involved, we'll lose the foundation that made America great. America is great because America is good. We need some young people who will stand up, who will believe in freedom, and really understand the God-given foundation this nation is built upon. Stand up for what is right. Don't give up. Every single person has a sphere of influence, and God has put you into that place to make a difference. I remember when Tony Perkins first felt the heart of God to call pastors to have a corporate time of prayer for the nation every year. The call to fall was born out of a leader's heart for the nation and the understanding that pastors and their churches can be positive gatekeepers for America. I believe that prayer is essential and fundamental for our success in being involved in whatever happens in government and politics. And the reason why is because prayer, if you look at the believers in the New Testament, prayer was to, is to enable them to receive power and anointing so they could be effective. We cannot be effective with our God. We need the Lord uh, to, to empower us, to give us boldness, to give us confidence, to break the fear out of, out of our lives so we could go forth and be the, the world changers. I believe prayer is our only hope. I believe that praying for God to forgive us and to give us another chance as a nation is the place where we are right now. And if we don't get that, we, we don't have any place to go. And the last several years, we have partnered with the Family Research Council uh, and taken part in the Call to Fall. In fact, last year, after the Call to Fall event, I had people come up to me saying, can we do this every Sunday? Uh, they were so excited about being able to come and pray for America. So we, we actually have our worship team that's there. They will play. Someone will grab the microphone and pray. They'll break out into a song, somebody else will pray, they'll lead us in another chorus of worship. So it's this atmosphere, not only of prayer and intercession, but of worship to God. And then it just sets the stage for, for Sunday's worship time. The Sunday before Independence Day, we're asking that you spend at least a few minutes on your knees as a church, praying for America. Visit calltofall.org to join what is becoming a movement where churches participating in all 50 states. Who knows, but what God might hear our cries, forgive our sins, and heal our land. This morning, I had another talk with the German Chancellor, Herr Hitler. And here is the paper which bears his name upon it as well as mine. We regard the agreement signed last night as symbolic of the desire of our two peoples never to go to war with one another again. When Hitler rose to power, no one believed that he would actually do the things that he said. You know, 
our history teaches us something very simple. When an enemy says he's going to annihilate you, believe him. Iran today poses a danger that threatens to engulf the entire world in chaos. A nuclear-armed Iran is a grave danger to the peace and security of the entire world. Diplomacy has failed. Will sanctions work? If diplomacy doesn't work, the clock could run out. We've wasted years on failed diplomacy. And there's no chance that Iran will be talked out of its nuclear weapons program. Iran is believed to be expanding right now its uranium enrichment activity deep inside of a mountain bunker. Iran has tripled the pace of production of 20% grade uranium. They're transferring their facilities underground to be immune. Time is running out. They're racing towards acquiring a nuclear weapon. None of us can afford to wait much longer. Bar for the sake of our prosperity, for the sake of our security, for the sake of our children, Iran must stop. Be Iran. Stop now. Last time, the world was silent. This time, our voices will be heard.
Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome. I'm giving instructions to our Crusade Radio audience if they want to join us right here on television. If you want to join us on television, you call us uh, or you go to the website ustream.tv. That's the letter U, ustream.tv. When that comes up at the top, there's a box there that says channel selection. The channel for this TV program is not a number. It is three words, Wiley Drake Show. W-I-L-E-Y-D-R-A-K-E-S-H-O-W. No dots, no dashes, no italics, no underscore, nothing, just all lowercase, Wiley Drake Show. That is the channel, and I welcome you to it today. Now, we're going to be on now for another 59 minutes. We'll be here at least, maybe a little longer if we have to. But we do welcome you to the Wiley Drake Show. We're hoping to hear... Uh, from one of our correspondents, Peggy uh, Neenaber, uh in Washington, D.C. My scheduler, Bob Bosworth, my scheduler, Bob Bosworth, called me and said they were going into a meeting on the Hill and they would take uh, a microphone in with them to broadcast that to us. Now, whether we will hear from them or not, of course, will depend upon the security there at the Capitol and sometimes they allow you, sometimes they don't. For weeks they allowed me to broadcast my show on location, live from the cafeteria, the public, I might add, cafeteria of SCOTUS, Supreme Court of the United States. Well, as I broadcast from there uh, several different times, I was broadcasting from there for a whole week two months ago, and then last month I was there and had been broadcasting every day at 12 noon uh, in the cafeteria from the Supreme Court. And finally, though, they sent me an email and said, you cannot broadcast, you cannot stream from in here. You cannot broadcast from the Supreme Court. The reason they gave was is that there is a ruling, they have set a ruling, that there be no photography inside the Supreme Court building. And uh, they considered streaming my picture on the Internet up to you as taking pictures and said, we're going to take your camera. And they attempted to take my camera, and we informed them that if they took the camera without a warrant, we would sue them. Well, they backed down on that and then said, no, okay, we won't take your camera, but you do have to go outside if you want to broadcast. Now, it is legal, at least at this point, to be on the sidewalk of the Supreme Court building and to broadcast. So probably this next week when I'm on location in D.C., I will be doing some broadcast from uh, the Supreme Court area, i.e. on the sidewalk. I don't want to go to jail uh, for that. That's a ridiculous order, but, uh, you know, you, you go along to get along or get along to go along or whatever you do. Anyway, you go along with the idiots there that establish those rules. Now, uh, the word idiot, folks, is not a pejorative term. I'm not being critical. I'm not uh, name-calling. The word idios comes from the Greek. The word idios means someone who really doesn't understand. They just don't understand the reality of life. That's what an idiot is. Someone who does not understand the reality of real life. And the Supreme Court of the United States and the dignitaries and the uh, security, they're idiots. They do not understand the reality of life. First of all, they do not understand the Constitution. They pass rules and laws uh, against things that are unconstitutional. The Constitution says you have freedom of speech. In fact, the matter is, there's always the example they use, or many people use, that are idiots themselves, but they say, well, you have freedom of speech, but you can't yell fire in a crowded theater. Well, yes, you can. You can yell fire in a crowded theater if there's a fire, you cannot yell fire if there's no fire. That has nothing to do with free speech. That just has to do with logic. If you do something that will harm someone, like yelling fire that there really isn't one in a crowded theater, that's not a violation of freedom of speech if you do that and they tell you not to. 
that's a law that says you can't do something that will harm someone. And that's what the real truth is. Now, I don't want to get tangled up in these arguments. We're going to move ahead because we've got more important things to do. <coughs> I'm hoping that Peggy Knee Neighbor, <coughs> excuse me, calls me and calls us from uh, the court, I mean, from the uh, Congress there where they're meeting. I have no idea what they're meeting on or about. We just heard that they were going to be there, and they said they would uh, turn the cell phone on and uh, broadcast to us. We're open. The line is open. Uh, we're, we're not going to close off any lines. They can call in. Uh, Brother Bob Bosworth, my uh, scheduler, is the one that called me and told me about this. And so we want you to know, ladies and gentlemen, that if you'd like to be on with me, you'd like to call in. I'm going to give you some numbers in a moment. But if you'd like to be on the Wiley Drake Show in the future for a longer period of time, uh, you can call my scheduler. His name is Bob Bosworth, Bob Bosworth, and his phone number is 699-8657. That's 699-8657. We're putting that up on the screen. But for those of you on the radio, if you want to call Bob, it's 714-699-8657, even though he is located in Georgia on East Coast time. It's already 12.06 in Georgia, just as it is there in Washington. But if you want to call Bob and say, I'd like to come on the show. Now, why would you want to come on the Wiley Drake Show? Well, we're broadcast live around the world. Anybody, anywhere in the world can pull down on the Internet and watch the Wiley Drake Show. Let me tell you what my philosophy and theology is and policy is here on the Wiley Drake Show. First and foremost, we are a Judeo-Christian organization. That means I'm Jewish and I'm Christian. And if you'd like to ask me what that means, I'll be more than happy to talk to you about it. And I will use my Bible to explain to you why I am both a Jew and a Christian. So we are Judeo-Christian in our principles and in our policy. Now, if you want to come on the show, you can come on and talk to me briefly for any purpose, uh, no matter who you are, where you come from. Uh, even you atheists can call out there, and you agnostics, and you sodomites, and anybody else, you're welcome to call me. We don't screen our calls. I am not a Rush Limbaugh. I do not screen my calls. I am not a standard talk show host, host because... I will take any caller anytime uh, if you'd like to call in. Now, with that in mind, we do request that you, if you want to come on the program for any length of time, that you be Judeo-Christian in nature. Now, why should you come on? Well, to share your ideas. If you would like to have, we'll give you up to 10 minutes absolutely free. You can send us an MP3. You can send us a video. You can email it uh, to uh, my producer uh, here in the studio. And uh, let's see who we got here on the line. <clears throat> Good morning. Welcome to the Wiley Drake Show. Hi. Hi. This is the Cosagas Brothers. How are you? Good morning, Cosagas Brothers. God bless you. How are you? Looking really good. All right, very good. Well, we I'm hearing two voices. Are you are you twins? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're the cheapest stereo system you'll ever get. All right. Well, we're a small radio and TV station, so we're used to using, uh, let's say, inexpensive, not cheap. Okay. <laughs> All right. The what? How do you spell that last name? Greek, all right, very good. Now, pronounce it for us. Chrysogus. Chrysogus, brothers, all right. Now, I know how to say your name, uh, but I have no idea who you are. I'm just the host of this show. I don't know what's going on. I believe my scheduler probably contacted you about coming on the Wiley Drake show on Internet television and on our radio show. Is that correct? All right. Well, tell us why in the world would he want you to be on my show? 
We actually are um, identical twin brothers, and we have a ministry. Our names are Brian and Sean Chrysagas, so we're two minutes apart. But um, we were dying as kids. We were, like, allergic to everything. Um, we were like the kids in the bubble. Um, the Lord healed us at the age of seven, but our testimony is that um, we were in incubators for two whole years of our life. We were allergic to the sun, the grass, um, trees. Uh, we're sardines, peanut butter, rice cakes, soybean milk, and, um, and rice cakes. Hello. And um, the Lord healed us So uh, at the age of seven. After the prompting of a, a chiropractor of our moms who um, told her to go to a full gospel businessmen's meeting. So um, I'm making a long story short, but, but um, she went to this full gospel businessmen's meeting. She was dying of a heart uh, um, condition. Um, from rheumatic fever at uh, the age of three that she got. And um, so when, when she went to the Full Gospel Business News meeting, this um, priest, Bobby Scanlon, actually called down for anybody who needed a miracle or needed a um, healing. And um, she came down and, and she accepted Jesus as her Lord and Savior. And then the next thing was she asked for a miracle for her sons. And um, he said, well, you're going to receive your miracle first, and then you go home and pray over your kids, because you have, as a parent, you have power in Jesus' name over your own house. So um, that's exactly what she did. She went home. Well, at first, she got prayed over, and um, she had an oxygen tank on, and then she was in a wheelchair. He takes the oxygen tank off, and the wheelchair, he, he gets her out of the wheelchair, and um, she starts running around the place. And um, our dad, who had never seen a miracle before, he passed out in the back. But then when she was okay, she gets um, to our house, and she prays over us as a family unit, and she commanded Satan to take his hands off us. Um, she broke the generational curses over our life, and um, we have been set free ever since uh, from the age of seven till now, which we are 44. She actually felt this evil spirit push her onto the floor when she prayed, and we were set free. Well, brother, sounds like a great thing that God did, and uh, we certainly do rejoice and know that our God is a healing God, not only then, but now. And uh, we indeed do uh, thank you for sharing that story. Now, can you tell us, did you put out a press release? Yes, actually, um, we just uh, released a brand new CD. Um, it's called Conversations with God, and um, we've done three CDs in the past. Um, actually, this is actually the fifth CD. Um, the other two, one was a record years ago, and then we released four CDs since then. But um, our last one was called Ransom, and this one, the new one, is called Conversations with God, and it's a whole different thing for us because we're usually contemporary Christian, a little bit more rock, and we mm. love the more contemporary sound, but the Lord's been really laying on our hearts that there isn't a lot of true worship out there in the churches today. Most of it's strange power, and mm. a lot of people have moved away from the true worship of God. They're, they're actually um, doing everything very politically correct, and they're not really even using the name of the Lord in their songs. They're mm, trying to make yeah. it that it could be for any religion and that we could be just all oneness. And, mm. and that's not the way God calls us. And the Lord is the only one we are supposed to be worshiping in, in spirit and in truth. And, and this CD, we really believe, and we're not bragging on what we have done, because it's the Lord guided us through it, and he that some great songwriters like Bob Farrell, who is known as one of the greatest Christian songwriters of all time, and Stephanie Busada, who is an amazing songwriter, who was also a co-host of, of the Seven Heart Club, and they wrote some of these songs for us, and we really, when God was telling us to do this, he was telling us that he wants to see people go beyond just their worship on Sunday and Amen. maybe in their own prayer rooms. He wants to take them into the inner courts and go to the throne room with them. And, and 
uh, we believe that the music on here really does that because we really have music that is uh, um, one song on there is called Holy Lord and it's really at the throne room of God Amen. and it takes you beyond and during the whole CD you really do feel the presence of God move upon the people because we prayed while we were doing the CD and we were getting into the studio we prayed and just covered it all in prayer and Amen. then we'd sit there and we'd just tell the Holy Spirit just take over Amen. and the the process was unbelievable, but the, when you hear the music, it really is the Holy Spirit took over. Well, my dear brother, you're absolutely, uh, uh, we're gracious for you to share that. Let me ask you a question, and then I want to talk a little further. Uh, did, you said you put out a press release at Christian Newswire? Yes. When yes, did you is. put that out, and what was the title of it? Do you know? It was called um, The Cartagos, um brings out a, new, a powerful new CD or something, and it's, um, it's about if you look up Chris August Brothers Worship CD um, on Christian Newswire, you'll see it. Okay, but I was trying to, I, that's what I'm, I'm trying to scroll down here and find it. Do you know when you put it out? It was out last week. It's called Conversations with God. And I, okay, let me, sure let, you, uh, let me see if I can. That uh, and, um, uh, I'm just... not really sure w w what date that was. Okay, what I, and, it's, right and, and, and sure. what was the title, Conversations with God? Yes. Okay, I'm, I'm scrolling here to try to find it because what I want to do is I want to encourage our listening audience if they would like to uh, uh, see your press release and get more. But you know what? This is the thing that we've been saying. Most people don't have conversations with God, and the Lord really wants to walk with them. And the whole reason why he created all of us and why he created Adam was for conversation. And yet we get so busy in our own lives, there's no conversations any longer with God. And that's why he, we've actually, this world has locked him out of our lives because they've tied his hands. And when he gave the authority to Adam on this earth and said that you have dominion, now use that dominion. And Adam gave it to the devil, and now the devil is ruling this world, and people are saying, why is God doing this? Why don't we hear from God? Why is God letting this happen or that happen? Well, we've tied his hands, and because we have not said or take over and really submitted ourselves and in a worship heart and a repentant heart, he can't do anything. Well, you're absolutely right, and, and, and we agree with you. And, folks, I would encourage you to... Uh, to check this out, this sounds like a great, great opportunity for those of us who love the Lord, who love Jesus, who would like indeed to to uh, uh, find out what God has been doing in these brothers' lives. And I would encourage you, I'm not finding it on the, uh, uh, but that doesn't mean it's not there. They could also look us up on Facebook if they want. Um... All right, now let me, let me do this. Let me ask you to do this for my listening audience. Mm -hmm. um, if they would like to get a copy of the book, what is the title of the book again? It, it, it's actually, the book is not out yet. The book is going to be out. It, it's, a, it's a CD of our music. It's a worship CD, and it's called Conversations with God. They could actually look it up on iTunes under Chris August Brothers, but we have a book that's going to go along with it, <laughs> and it, the, the book is going to be um, a friend of ours, Warren Marcus, told us to write this book, and our mom had died 10, 11 years ago, and um, we, we were going through some tough times these last few years, and we went through her journal, and our mom was such a woman of God, when she spoke, you just knew it was God. Yeah, amen. We went through amen. her journal just to give us some inspiration and just to, you know, reflect on some things, and uh, we got to tell you, uh, Pastor Drake, it was like God was speaking to us from heaven using our mom's journal. So um, when we told our friend Warren Marcus about the um, about the journal. He said, "Guys, there's a book in there. You have to um, develop this book." Mm -hmm. And we were told by a, a, a woman who's a preacher, um, Sherry Caudal, who has her own ministry. Um, it's called Throne Room uh, Ministries. She she told us she had a word over us, and she's like, "Guys, the Lord says me you have a book, and it's through your mom's journal." And we never ever dreamed that we would be doing a book, but mm -hmm. we wrote this book, and it's almost 
totally finished and it's called um, Love Letters Left Behind. Mm, and yeah. it's all about our mom's journal and how the Lord used it to um, encourage and strengthen us. And, and, you know, I think that it, the Bible tells us that there's a great cloud of witnesses that are cheering us on. And people don't realize how close that great cloud of witnesses are. And it's our mom who went before us, our grandmother, you know, who are still praying to our Heavenly Father for us. So it's like, you know, we just keep on running the race to win. But, um, and, and that newswire um, news thing that you want people to look up, it is September 14th on Christian Newswire. So if they look up the September 14th Newswire, um, you can see the Christagas Brothers release a powerful new worship city called Conversations with God. Okay, so it was on September the 14th. Ladies and gentlemen, the reason I do that is because many of you know that I am a real fan of Christian Newswire. Yeah, here it is, the Christagas Brothers. I see it now. I found it. Uh, and you see a picture of them. And, yeah, uh, you see who's in the middle of us? Abby Turnquist, who was our inspiration growing up. Do you remember Abby? Yes, yes, that yes, was our yes. favorite. I mean, oh, my gosh. And we're going to be doing a concert with her. And we did one last year. And, oh, my gosh, we smiled. She's got the cutest dimples. And we smiled from the time it began to the time it ended. And our faces hurt from smiling so much. <laughs> our hearts were beating so fast. She was like our, um, our biggest... From the time we were seven, she was the very first Christian artist we ever, ever heard her music, ever, ever. And, and we just loved her. And she did a concert called Come On, Ring Those Bows at the Moundsville Baptist Church, and she's coming back to do one with us uh, on um, December the 8th. She'll be doing a concert with us, so we're excited. Well, this is very exciting, fellas. We just really uh, praise the Lord for it. I, I am... Uh, uh, I have the privilege to serve uh, at an organization in Washington, D.C. In fact, I'm going to be in D.C. Uh, Sunday night for about uh, 10 days. Uh, and I had the privilege to be the chairman of the Congressional Prayer Conference of Washington, D.C. And, and, and you can go to that web page. I know it's a long title, but it's Congressional Prayer Conference of Washington, D.C. And you'll see myself as well as my co-chairman, that the Lord has brought into my life uh, a couple of years ago, a fellow by the name of Clyde Rivers, and he is the co-chair of the Congressional Prayer Conference of D.C., and uh, he is also the ambassador at large uh, for the country of Burundi, the African country. Now, the reason he is that, he is not a Burundian, he is an American. But he became very spiritually infatuated because he's a spirit-filled man and he's a pastor here in California. But he became very infatuated with the new president of Burundi because the new president of Burundi, we were hearing rumors, he was hearing rumors, that he was indeed a Christian and was using the Bible. And not only was he using the Bible, but when Dr. Rivers went over there, he found out that when he went there as a uh, guest, if you would, to sort of see what the president was doing, they would fo he would follow the president around, and uh, they would go into a great uh, venue where the president was going to be speaking to the people. And before the event occurred, before it happened and started, the president would come out with the choir and lead a worship service wow. <laughs> before the president spoke. And so everywhere he goes now, they know that the president is going to show up early and be there with a choir and lead worship before they have their high-level uh, presidential meeting. And so Dr. Clyde Rivers got interested in that and followed that and saw what a great godly man this was and what a great work God was doing in the African country of Burundi. And several people have told stories about men in uh, uh, Burundi that uh, went there and uh, spoke uh, a prophecy over Burundi and that Burundi was going to be a great nation and so forth and so on. In fact, there's some uh, young men yesterday in D.C. was sharing with me. There's a thing going on in D.C. on the 25th called David's Tent. And it's going to be a worship time, and it's absolutely a miracle God told a young fellow with YWAM to put up a David's tent uh, in D.C., and when he went there, he applied for a permit for a tent 
which is almost unheard of. Uh, but they said, yes, we will grant you the permit. Where do you want to put it? And uh, uh, he said, well, uh, I'm not sure. And they said, well, when do you want to put it up? And he said, well, I'm not sure. <laughs> Turned out his birthday is on the 25th day of uh, September. And so he said, okay, I'll pick that day. That's that's the, uh, that's my birthday. And he said, I'll just use that as a date on the application. And they suggested to him, and this is God's movement again, like you're talking about in your relationship, uh, they suggested, the D.C. people <laughs> suggested, that they use the uh, uh, yard there at the White House, the, uh, uh, the uh, I can't think of what they call it, the Oblis. Uh, but anyway, it's oval in shape, and they're gonna, they got the permit. They're going to put the tent up there on the 25th, which coincidentally, <laughs> if you, and I don't believe in coincidences, it's God, but God opens that worship tent on the 25th. That's the beginning of Yom Kippur. And, of course, Amen. we need to support Israel and so forth. Now, with that in mind, uh, they're gonna, it's not going to be a rally. It's not going to be a demonstration place. It's going to be a 24-hour day, seven day a week, uh, for 40 days, a worship tent, David's worship tent. That's wonderful. That's really awesome. And we'd love for you guys to uh, come and worship. Uh, I would really love that. It, what, could you send us information? Or? Let me just tell you how to get there. Go to the uh, go to the web and just go to uh, David's Tent DC. David's Tent DC. David's huh? Tent DC dot com. Okay, wonderful. I'm sorry, .org. They may meet us there. Yeah, David's, David's Tent DC org. Now, like I said, it's not performance. No one is performing, but there will be a great deal of worship leaders there that uh, will be leading in worship 24 hours a day, seven days a week for 40 days leading up to the election. And, uh, so, and I'll be there several days for that worship experience. And so anytime during uh, that, that period of time, anytime from the 25th, 40 days forward, uh, anyone is welcome to come and worship. Well, you know, what's wonderful is I think God's been calling all of us to really a deeper worship walk with him. And um, as the Bible shows, that every time they ever went out to a battle, they always sent the praisers and the worshipers out first. Did you realize that? I did. In fact, I used to joke with my, I've been a, I'm a Southern Baptist pastor and a pastor churches over the years, and that's what I do now. <laughs> in, in addition to b being a, a TV and radio talk show, uh, most preachers took up golf. I took up radio and TV. But anyway, <laughs> uh, but at any rate, uh, I've always joked. I said, you know, uh, they said, well, why do the people, why do the worshipers and singers get to, uh, uh, get to sing first and of course I've been a very controversial fellow over the years and and I've told my minister of music uh, you know I, I want to get a minister of music that looks a little bit like me uh, so he goes out first and if somebody's trying to shoot me they'll shoot him instead you know <laughs> <laughs> and I said and I'm biblical in that because that's what David did David said okay fellas let's mount up let's lock and load let's get ready to go to battle but wait a minute before we go send the choir send the music minister out there yeah. And, and if they make it, then we'll follow up. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> well, actually, you know what? People don't realize the power of praise and worship because um, in, in the book that we just wrote that, that isn't out yet, we, we actually share about how um, praise and worship has um, changed a lot of the way um, things are done. Uh, have you ever heard of the, um, uh, the Wall of Jericho walk that, that you were supposed to do? I mean, our, our mom was going through something when she was alive and she gave us a word and she looked in the Bible, she opened up the Bible and she read about the walls of Jericho. Mm. She put a chair, God told her to put a chair in the middle of the room, write down all the situations in your life or your problems. She wrote it down, she put it on a chair and she, God told her to praise him around that chair. Amen. She did it once a day 
seven days for seven days on the seventh day she did it seven times and she had us do it with her and every single time uh, because god is a man of his promise Amen. Um, every time you take him at his word and say okay lord this is what you did for the israelites look this is what you promised them this, uh, you take him at his word he comes through so we we did the same thing and every single time we have ever done that praising our walls down we always see victory Amen. Amen, brother. Well, uh, thank you so much for being with us. And I, I want to share with you also that back in the year 2000, a friend of mine and I were in D.C. and uh, God spoke to him and then he shared with me that we should start the organization called Congressional Prayer Conference of Washington, D.C. And we go to D.C., went to D.C. every year since 2000. In fact, in 2011, we started going uh, every month. We are in D.C. once a month, usually the last week in the month, and we go there to pray. We don't go there to demonstrate or rally or, or lobby. Uh, many of us do that on other times, but that last week in the month, and that's going to be the 24th this month, we go there, and let me just sort of give you the scenario the scenario is right by the Supreme Court at 117 2nd Street, we go into a prayer chapel there, Men for Nations Prayer Chapel. We go in there and we pray from 8 o'clock in the morning until 1030 within sight of the uh, Supreme Court. I said yesterday, and my attorney called me up and told me don't say it, but I'm going to say it again. We're within a stone's throw of the Supreme Court. I said yesterday, I could throw a rock through the window of the Supreme Court from there. He said, don't say that. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not going to throw any rocks. So, uh, Secret Service, y'all settle down. I'm not going to. That was a euphemism that I used. But that's where we're at every day, Monday through Friday. We pray from 8 to 1030 uh, in the prayer room. And then we exit the prayer room and we do a Jericho walk around the Capitol. That is awesome. That's awesome. From, from uh, 1030 to 1230, we walk around the Capitol and do a, a national prayer embassy tour. In fact, if you're ever in Washington, D.C., uh, on Sunday, I would love to have you on our tour. We do a tour of the city. It takes about two and a half hours. It's done by a pastor who's been doing it now for 30 years, and he knows Washington, D.C. like the back of his hand. But he takes a 15-passenger van, and he tours people around the city, not on a tourist tour, but on a national prayer embassy tour going by the FBI, the CIA, the Congress, the White House, and praying Jesus is Lord over all these areas. And that is no place that needs it more than Washington, D.C., my goodness. Amen, it's, amen. They're, they're right now, with the way the president is and how they, he didn't want to even talk about God or yeah. um, or this or the Jerusalem, we're like, oh, my gosh, yeah. we need prayer like never before. So we're doing that, and we do that, uh, and I would encourage you, if you're ever going to be in Washington, D.C. on Sunday, uh, we'd love to have you. He'll pick you up at your hotel or whatever, and it's absolutely free. doesn't cost a dime, but it's a two-and-a-half-hour tour. goes out to Arlington, gives you all the sights you'd want to see in Washington, D.C., but it does it from a perspective of a rolling prayer meeting, and I call it the prayer mobile. I said if the Pope can have a Pope mobile, why can't we have a prayer mobile? And so we would encourage you and all of our listening audience, if you ever want to tour the Capitol on Sunday morning, it's at 730. And by the way, if you would like to do a virtual tour, you can't get to D.C., you can go to the prayer line. We do it on the air on a prayer conference call line every Sunday morning at 730. And any of you out there, folks, if you'd like to do a virtual tour before you go on the real tour or before you think about the tour, at 7.30 Sunday morning, you call this telephone number and put in this access code, 712-432-1690. 
and then you put in the uh, access code with that number, 399-430-POUND, and you will hear Pastor Jeff Wright. You'll hear me. You'll hear other folks from around the country that are going on the virtual tour, the virtual prayer tour, and it's done every Sunday morning. And when you get to D.C., you can take the tour in the prayer mobile and go with uh, Pastor Jeff there. I'll be doing it next Sunday. I'll be actually in the van. I won't be doing it virtually. I'll be doing it literally there on the hill. And uh, that prayer line that I gave you is also open every day. I talked about the Congressional Prayer Conference. Back in 2002, we opened up what I call telephonic prayer. God spoke to me and said, do telephonic prayer. And so that number that I gave you is for the telephonic prayer meeting every day, seven days a week at 8 o'clock, except on Sunday, and it's at 7.30 because we begin the tour. Now, anyone is welcome to call in on that and be a part of that. But uh, back to you guys for a minute. Tell our listening audience, if they would like to get a copy of your CD, how do they get it? They could either... um go to iTunes right now it's up on iTunes all of the songs there's 18 songs and all and then or they could write us go to our website chrisagas.org or send a check or money order to um, Chris August Brothers C-H-R-I-S-A-G-I-S 103 Sinclair Avenue Yorkville, Ohio 43971 um, the CD itself because there's 18 songs on it um, we're charging $20 for the CD and um, $5 shipping if, if they want it so it would be around $25 but it's worth the money because you could put it on in your prayer time and um and the Lord will just, I mean, really minister to you. So, um, so we hope that people will go to our website and, and, and get it. Well, ladies and gentlemen, as you know, we do not charge for any advertising that we do on this program. Anything that we promote is done absolutely free, and that's true in this case. We would give you an incentive for purchasing that CD. Now, that incentive is this. If you purchase their CD after you have used it and you would like to come on the Wiley Drake Show and say, hey, I bought the CD and it has blessed me and I'd like to share my experience with the CD, we'll give you up to 10 minutes on the Wiley Drake Show to come on absolutely free. We'll give you a phone number to call in on. If you're near California, you can come in the studio. Or if you're with me in D.C., I'll be on location. You could do it on location with me. But I want to give you the incentive. If you will purchase the CD and call my producer, my producer's telephone number is 714-699-8657. It's 714-699-8657. His name is Bob Bosworth. Call Bob and say, hey, I bought the CD, and I want to come on the Wiley Drake Show and talk about it, and he will book you on the Wiley Drake Show. We do two shows a day, five days a week, plus some on location. But we always do one at 12 noon D.C. time and one at 8 p.m. D.C. time. Where are you guys located? We're from Ohio. Okay, you are you, are you well. You're on East Coast time too, right? Yeah, we're actually close to uh, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Though. Yeah. Okay. All right. And uh, but anyway, ladies and gentlemen, our show is on at eight. Uh, excuse me, <laughs> at twelve noon Eastern time and eight p.m. Eastern time. You call my producer Bob and say, "Hey, we bought the CD and we love it, and we want to share about it. We'll give you up to ten minutes to come on and share about it." Now. Thank you, Pastor Drake. That's awesome. Now, I I do that uh, with an ulterior motive. Uh, I want a free CD out of the deal. (laughs) (laughs) We will send it to you. Actually, we have your address here, and uh, as soon as we get the CD in, which will be like next week, we will send it out to you. We actually told Bob that we wanted to wait until after um, you received the CD so that we could be guests so that you could actually um, know 
know more about us. Well, we on your show a few years back, I don't, I'm not sure if you remember, but we we did something with you. Uh, I think last year or the year before. It's last year. Yeah. Well, I I remembered it slightly, but uh, fellas, uh, two things. Number one, I, like I said, I do about uh, more than a dozen shows every week. Yes. And, and I've been doing it now for about twelve years. <laughs> Uh, that's fantastic. Uh, plus, I'm 68 years old, and my memory is not what it used to be. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you keep on doing what you're doing for the Lord, because you're doing an amazing job. Well, the Lord's doing it, and I just have the privilege to sort of be in charge of what's going on here. And uh, let me tell you this. I'm going to be gone all next week. I'll, in fact, I'll be on location broadcasting live from Washington all next week. I'll be on location in Washington, D.C. By the way, we've renamed it. It's not the District of Columbia anymore. It's the District of Christ. And we did that as ambassadors for the kingdom of God because Columbia was a false god. And we do not want our nation's capital named after Columbia, a false god. Amen. But anyway, we have done that. Now, next week, uh, I'll be on location. When I get back, I want you fellows to know, uh, thank you for saying you'll send me a CD. When I get back, we will put that CD on our show. Though, let me just tell you how our shows run. My show is on at 12 noon and at 8 p.m. But at 11.30... At 11.30, before 12 noon, my producer here plays CDs. Oh, wonderful. And so what we will do is we will start playing your CD. Now, we, pr we, we don't play the whole CD on any one show. But one half hour before I come on the air, we play CDs of people that have worship music. We play CDs. We have a group called Oath Keepers. We, pray, we play uh, uh, CDs and MP3s of folks that are promoting their pro-life and pro-family. So for the first half hour, from 11.30 to 12, we play CDs. But a lot of what we play uh, is music CDs. And uh, once I get the CD, I will begin listening to it, and we will begin to play my favorites <laughs> from the well, CD. I really appreciate that. I'll play my favorites from the CD, and we'll also, when I play one of those, up on the screen will pop up a picture of you guys, as well as how to order the CD. And so yeah, we will we will do that for you, and uh, we'll benefit, and my show will be better, so I'll benefit that way. And uh, like I said, I'm getting a free CD out of the deal, so it's a win-win. <laughs> It's a win-win situation all the way around. It is. it is. Thank you so much. We appreciate you having us on, and we're praying blessings upon your trip to Washington, and may the Lord use you greatly. And be safe. Thank you. And by the way, I don't know if Bob mentioned this or not. I just did, but I do another show tonight at 8 o'clock your time, and I'd love to have you come back on tonight because we have almost a totally different audience on That's on. Awesome. On the evening show, so come back in on the evening we show. Sure will. Is it, no, it's, it, no, the website that we can give for our, our supporters because we are on Facebook and all these um, internet, uh, whatever you call them, the pages, and they're all wanting to know how to hear this. Do we go U.S. Do we, it's, you stream? Don't. Yeah. Well, let me let me tell you. There's two ways to see it. Uh, I'm on Facebook, Wiley Drake. And uh, when I, I put up on Facebook every day that my show is on live, and they can click there and go live and see the show for the day. Now, awesome. if they're not on Facebook or they don't know how to do that on Facebook, they simply go to the website, www.u, the letter U, mm -hmm. stream, S-T-R-E-A-M, dot TV. <laughs> Ustream dot TV. Now, when they go to that page, up at the top is a little box like you have on Facebook, but it'll say Channel Selections. And the way to select my channel is not a number. 
The channel selection that you put in there is Wiley, W-I-L-E-Y, D-R-A-K-E, S-H-O-W, Wiley Drake Show. No dots, no dashes, no underscores, no capitals, just Wiley Drake Show is the channel, and they'll be able to see this. In fact, shortly after we go off the air, we'll be going off the air in about 18 minutes. Uh, Shortly after that 18 minutes is over, our show will be in the can and they can come back to the Ustream.tv, go to the Wiley Drake Show in the channel, and they'll be able to see this show again. Oh, awesome. Now, they won't be able to see you, obviously. Sure. But they will be able to hear you, and they'll be stuck with just seeing me until we get some video downloaded of you guys. Well, we were going to say, well, if they could see us, we, we weren't prepared. We don't know where the cameras are. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, we'll uh, we'll get you on the camera at a later time. Keep me posted. Let me also give you my email address. Okay. My email address is Wiley Wiley W I L E Y W I L E Y Wiley Wiley at a t t dot net. Right. So it's Wiley Wiley at a t t dot net. Keep me posted with your schedule. I well, do we quite have, and during California too, because if we're ever in California, Bob told us to look you up, and we could be live in the studio with you sometime. Absolutely, I don't know if you've been to California before, but we're yeah. just up the street from Knott's Berry Farm. Oh, that's a beautiful place. And uh, we're just about eighteen miles from downtown Hollywood. Uh, that's a, <laughs> we we have gone there many times actually. Um, we have a friend out there. Er, do you know Eric Estrada from Chips? Yes. He lives right there, so we we go there many times. Well, and once a month, on the third Saturday of every month, I was talking about a prayer tour a while ago. The fellow that does the prayer tour now for more than 30 years in D.C. also does a once-a-year Hollywood prayer tour. Oh, that's awesome. Right. He comes out here during the Oscars week when Oscars are being given out, and he does a prayer tour of Hollywood. Well, we did that with him last year, and we started this year. We do now a Hollywood prayer tour once a month. That's wonderful. We ha- we get a fifteen we get a fifteen passenger van. We leave from here just north of Knott's Berry Farm. We drive over to Hollywood. We go to every major studio. We don't get out except for potty breaks, but uh, we, uh, we, we tour the studios, and, and we stop, and we pray, and say Jesus is Lord over Paramount. Jesus is Lord over Man, Sony. Yeah. And so we do that on the third Saturday. So in your scheduling, please keep me uh, abreast of your schedule. And if you're here on the third Saturday, we'd love to take you on that tour. Oh, we would love that. That would be awesome. And uh, if you're not here on that Saturday, we would still love to have you in the studio here at the First Southern Baptist Church, where I'm broadcasting from right now, where I broadcast from every day at 9 o'clock California time and 5 o'clock California time. Uh, Tomorrow, I'll be on my way to New York. Uh, so tomorrow my morning show will be on, but my afternoon show, uh, I won't be there. I'll have a guest hostess. I'll have a lady here that uh, uh, came off the street, a miracle, walking miracle. Uh, I won't go into all the details of it now because she'll probably share some tomorrow, but, uh, but she was serving the devil in the biggest way you can imagine. Uh-oh, we lost the guys. Sorry about that. Don't know what happened there, but we lost them. Maybe I scared them. I don't know. (laughs) Amen. Well, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for listening. That was the Kasagas. I think I'm pronouncing it right. Get back over here and see if I can find that again, and see if I can find it. Okay, let me let me see if I'm. Pro- I may not be pronouncing that right. Okay, Chris Sagas, C H R I S S A G I S, and that's a Greek name, and they look very Greek. 
or they could be Italians. <laughs> They've both got very dark black hair, black Fu Manchu mustaches, and and uh, uh, you know. They're uh, they're good good looking fellas, and they've got Evie there in the picture with us, huh? Yeah, that very European, very European Greek look, and uh, we thank the Lord for them being on with us. Well, ladies and gentlemen, uh, that was uh, that was great great opportunity. I'm looking forward to getting my free CD, <laughs> and we'll be playing it here on the Whitey Drake Show for you. Uh, and I would encourage you to go uh, to their. Uh, uh, look them up and get their CD. Now, I, I don't. I didn't write down their uh, uh, website, but maybe I can find it here. I'm not seeing it, but I'm sure you can find it. Uh, let me give you the spelling of their name, and then you'll be able to get it. It's Chrysagis, C-H-R-I-S-A-G-I-S, Chrysagis, C H R I. S A G I S, Chrysagus Brothers. And uh, I don't know how old they are. They look to be uh, in their 30s, but uh, I don't know. Uh, I'm an old man. How can I know how, how old people are? Everybody looks young to me. <laughs> but anyway, the Chrysagus Brothers will be also be doing a U.S. tour, plus a Christmas concert with the legend Evie Turnquist in December. Uh, we'll try to find out when that's going to be and where that's going to be. Uh, and it says, uh, hosted by either legendary actress Chris Saga's friend Lindsay Wagner or superstar Joe Penny. I have no idea who Joe Penny is, but, but that just means I don't know what I'm talking about. The Twins are nominated this year as Best Duo in Christian Music by the Heritage Awards, voted on the Artist uh, Music Guild in North Carolina. The award ceremony will be held in November. Uh, the CD has 19 songs on it. And they said they were apologizing almost for charging 20 bucks. Well, that's only a buck a song. That's, that's not bad at all. The brothers are excited about their project. Let me just go back over this. Uh, this says Yorkville, Ohio. Uh, the internationally popular Chrysagus brothers, Brian and Sean, are back in the press again for yet another powerful CD <clears throat> that will be out in September. They better hurry. September's almost over. The CD is a worship CD called Conversations with God, and you can get that on iTunes. Can we download iTunes, Jaime? Do you know how to download iTunes? Okay. Well, they say it's on iTunes, and it is called Conversations with God, a journey through worship that takes a listener into an atmosphere of total surrendering to God uh, and into the throne room. I love that. I love it. Worship, worship, worship. The brothers are excited about this project that was produced by acclaimed musician Jeff Garrison, who worked with Bruce Springsteen. Uh, Garrison uh, owns Fly to Wing Wings to Fly Studios and wants to produce more CDs for the Chrysagas duo. The brothers say these songs are not for radio play, but for true worshipers. Well, we're going to play them on the radio <laughs> and on the television and in the worship center. Uh, my technician here not only plays things on radio and TV, but he plays them in the worship center here at the worship center of the First Southern Baptist Church of Buena Park. Now, uh, we did not hear from uh, uh, Peggy. Knee neighbor, uh, and the Shank brothers, or any of those folks. So I'm not sure what's going on there, but that's okay. We'll uh, we'll live without them or with them or whatever. But uh, I want you uh, folks. I want to put out a word here. Uh, many of you know that we have asked uh, uh, Peg Abercrombie to to work with us on the Salt and Light, and she's been doing that uh, on the computer. And one of the projects that I've given her is to find some history, some Christian history of Hollywood. She's been working on that and has found some. But if any of you have anything out there you would like to um, uh, send to her, anything of a nature of uh, Christian history uh, in, uh, in Hollywood. Peg, would you like to give out your email? Um, yeah. Peg Abercrombie at Hotmail.com. 
And uh, I assume everybody knows how to spell. Is it Peg? P E G. Abercrombie. A B E R C R O M B I E. Peg Abercrombie at hotmail.com. If you have a item of history, don't send her an email to complain about me, okay? You send an email to complain about me to me. <laughs> but if you have Christian <laughs> If you have Christian history, something you'd like to share with her, she would love to have your input. So send it to her and uh, get that Christian history to us. And uh, we praise the Lord for uh, the boys being on with us today and uh, thank the Lord for uh, their music. I'm looking forward. This sounds like a great, great worship song. Now, we only have about six minutes, and I'm going to do a little advertisement since no one else is calling. I'm going to do a little advertisement for some of the products that we advertise for. The first one I'm going to advertise for, I'm going to give you the website first. The website is type2solution.com. Type2solution.com. Now, the reason for that website is type2 solution. Type2 diabetic solution. But it's just type2solution.com. And I'm here to tell you, I'm a type 2 diabetic. I was on diabetic medication, taking some 40-some-odd pills a day, and I take zero now, and I'm not on insulin, and I'm not a diabetic anymore except for borderline. Now, my sugar is down. One of the ways that I've kept my sugar down is I found out about a product, and I'm going to hold the package up. This is a package of tea. This is not a herb. This is not an adit. This, this is not a medicine. It's a tea. It's a tea. It's made from the bane of a tree from Guatemala. The bane of the tree is the inner bark. They take it out and they leave the tree alive, but they take the bark out and they grind it up and we make a tea from it. Here's what the tea looks like when you finish it up. It's nice and brown and rich in color. And very rich in flavor, and we praise the Lord for it. Now, I'm getting a uh, 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 text message here. Let's see who this is. Uh, text Fun Club. No, I don't think so. Somebody's sending me an advertisement. I'm doing my own advertisement. Anyway, my blood sugar is down to normal. My cholesterol is down. Uh, my blood pressure is down, all because I have been drinking a tea called Milagro de la Selva. Milagro de la Selva. That means <clears throat> miracle of the jungle. And I drink that tea every day, three times a day, and it lowers my blood sugar. Also lowers my cholesterol, triglycerides, and all that kind of stuff. And so I encourage you to do it. Now, I just told you I'm going to be traveling. And how do you take bottles of tea and this kind of stuff in your suitcase? Well, you don't. The Milagro de la Selva people have what they call MDS Forte, which is nothing more than an elixir, a two-ounce bottle of elixir that's an abstract and an, uh, uh, um, taken from Milagro de la Selva tea, an extract, and you put, uh, you put about, uh, what is it, say, 40 drops, I think, or something like that. You put 30 drops in an 8-ounce glass of water, and you make your tea instant. So you can have it when you travel. And so I want you to get Milagro de la Selva. If you want to buy it, you can't buy it in the U.S. You can't buy it from me. you got to order it from Milagro de la Selva in Guatemala. But the way you go is you go on their website, type2solution.com. Com, type2solution.com, and you can purchase it there. Now, there's one other product that I want to push today, and that is, uh, in addition to that, is a detox called Zeolite. It's called NCD2. It can be found at Weora, W-A-I-O-R-A, Weora.com. Check it out. I think you'll find that it'll help clean up your system if you're getting garbage in the water or if you're getting garbage in the air, and we know we all are. So that goes along with the tea and helping you. Now, there is one other product that I want to talk about quickly before we go off the air. One of the other ways that I've helped my uh, 
blood sugar is not only drinking this tea and using this detox, but one of the other ways is to go on an almost vegetarian diet. I go 75-25, 75% fruits and vegetables, 25% flesh, that is meat, and I stay away from red meat. Now, there is a product on the market. It comes in a bottle like this. It's a full quart bottle. It is not a juice, ladies and gentlemen. It is a puree. Now, these fruits that are in here, this is a bottle of fruit liquefied, and they're recommended by God himself. The reason I say they're recommended by God himself is there are 12 fruits in here that are listed in the Bible. They're listed in the Bible, so God's word is real. God wouldn't have put it there if he didn't want us to have it. And so there are 12 fruits in this bottle. I don't have time to give you the names of them, but you can go to their website and check them out. Their website is real easy. Fruit Spirit, two words, fruitspirit.com. Check them out. You'll find out that in this bottle there are 12 fruits that are mentioned, recommended by God in the Bible. You'll also find that there are 10 alkalizing minerals from the Holy Land, from the Dead Sea, that are recommended by God as well. You'll also find three other things in this bottle. You will find frankincense, remember that, and myrrh, remember Christmas time. You'll also find a whole leaf aloe puree. All of those products are in this bottle. If you drink one ounce of this, it's equivalent to five servings of fruits and vegetables. This will help you. Milagro de la Selva will help you. It helps your body, it helps your soul, and it helps your spirit. Go to type2solution.com, go to fruitspirit.com, go to weora.com, and get those products. You can get the tea, you can get the uh, fruit, and you can also get the detox. This detox has been used by many, many people. Folks that have alcohol and drug problems, folks that are just taking in a lot of uh, toxins from the air and from the water. And so, by the way, when you make this tea, do not make it with tap water. Make it with bottled water. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for watching the Wiley Drake Show today. This is time for us to end. We will be back at 5 o'clock. Tomorrow at 5 o'clock, Brenda Darty, the cook, the food coordinator, and one of our workers here at the church will be hosting the Wiley Drake Show. I'll be on in the morning. After I'm on tonight at 5, God bless you. Remember, do justice, love mercy, and walk with God. That's Micah 6.